Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 28. It's on stoichiometry, which is really just measuring atoms. In other words, in a reaction, we're measuring the atoms we have before the reaction and after. And because of the conservation of mass, we have to make sure those are the same. And so it's a really powerful tool. Chemistry teachers love stoichiometry and students not so much. And so let's think of it as musical chairs. As you're playing musical chairs, you're walking around the circle. And so you're kind of bonded to the floor, but when the music stops, you have to quickly find a chair. And when you do that, it's like a chemical reaction. You're breaking your bonds with the floor, forming new bonds with that chair. And if there's not enough chairs, then you're kind of out. In other words, chairs could be the limiting uh, reactant in this reaction. And so sometimes we don't have enough chairs, and sometimes we don't have enough people. And so reactions are going to be the same way. And so um, basically stoichiometry allows us to measure chemical reactions but in order to do it we have to have a balanced chemical equation and so the coefficients in that equation are going to show us the number of moles and so it's the mole proportion so just this one idea is so powerful if you understand it you can answer so many different problems but if you don't get it then the following five things figuring out expected product, limiting reactants, percent yield, molar mass of gases, and titrations are going to be really confusing. But the one thing that ties them all together is this idea that the, the coefficients in an equation represent the number of moles. And so as you watch this video, look for the commonalities. What's going to be the one thing that ties all five of these together? First thing, let's say we're trying to figure out the expected products. And so in this reaction, in the burning of methane in a Bunsen burner, we're combining methane gas with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. And so let's say you're given this problem. Given a certain amount of mass of methane, could you figure out how much water is produced? Well, the secret is going to look like this. We can go from the number of grams to the number of moles. We can then go through a mole conversion and then go back to grams again. And so you're going to see this over and over and over in each of these problem sets. And so the first thing you have to do is make sure that that equation is balanced. And so once it's balanced, then we're ready to go. That should always be your first step when you're doing stoichiometry. Make sure that equation is balanced. And then we start with what we know. And I always write that over 1 because it's easier to do these factor label methods. And so we've got 24.6 grams of methane. First thing you want to do is convert that to moles. How do we do that? We're going to use the atomic mass of methane. Remember it's going to be the carbon which is 12 and the hydrogen which is around 1 and so this is going to be the formula mass of methane. And so now we've converted it to moles of methane. Next thing we want to do is we want to bridge the gap. We want to go from the methane over to the water and so we're going to use a mole conversion to do that. So this one mole of methane is going to correspond to two moles of water. And so this is the secret of stoichiometry. We can use the numbers in front, these coefficients, and that's going to allow us to bridge the gap. So we've already converted it to moles of water. Now we can just go back to um, grams again. So we're going to use that mole conversion. In other words, water is going to have an atomic mass of 18.02 grams. So now we've gone to grams of water, and so we can quickly solve the problem. And so again, it's really easy to predict what we're going to get in a reaction just using the equation in the periodic table. Now what's a limiting reactant or a limiting reagent? That's going to be something in an equation that we don't have enough of. And so right here, what would be the limiting reactant in this game of musical chairs? It would be the number of people. In other words, once they correspond, we're going to have a lot extra of these, of these chairs. And so let's look at this reaction. Let's say that this is a real simplified model. So we've got one methane, and then we've got five of these water molecules. This is before the reaction, and this is after the reaction. What was the limiting reactant? Well, the limiting reactant was methane. If we would have had more methane, we could have had more product. But since we only had one carbon, we could only make one carbon dioxide out of it. And so limiting reactants are another thing that we can measure using stoichiometry. So let's say you're presented with this problem. In this equation, you have 10 grams of methane, 10 grams of oxygen. Which of those would be the limiting reactant? Well, how do you solve this problem? What we're going to have to do is kind of work it out using these two different alternatives. And so here it is. It's familiar again. We're going to go from grams to moles to moles to grams. So we're going to start with what we know. 10 grams of methane and 10 grams of oxygen. And then we're simply going to compare it to one of the products on the right side. And so what we can do is convert that to moles of methane and oxygen. So we've converted that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to one of the products on the right side. For this one, I've just chosen to compare it to carbon dioxide. 
And so we're going to bridge the gap between the moles of oxygen and methane to moles of carbon dioxide. And so why do we have a 2 here? Because we have a coefficient of 2 on the left side. And we only have a 1 on this side because we have a coefficient of 1 on this side. So now we can bridge the gap to carbon dioxide. We can then convert those back to grams again. And so this is the expected products we would get using these two different reactants to start with. And so in other words, if we have 10 grams of methane, we could make 27.4 grams of carbon dioxide, but we're not going to because the limiting reactant is the oxygen. That's only going to provide us with 6.88 grams of carbon dioxide. And so oxygen would be the limiting reactant in this, in this reaction. Now, what, what we're looking at here is a predicted yield, how much you think you could get. Now, do you think in a reaction you're ever going to get that amount? No. It's never going to go all the way to completion like that. We're going to not have a lot of those atoms. Think of all those billions and billions of atoms that are trying to combine together. And so this is simply a predicted yield. And so what we can use is that predicted yield and then the actual yield to figure out the percent yield. In other words, this is how much we could get theoretically. This is how much we did get. And so we can use this formula, actual yield divided by percent yield, uh, excuse me, predicted yield, and that can give us the percent yield. And so we got 90% of what we could have got, and we're never going to approach 100%, but we can get pretty close to it. Now let's go to molar masses of gases. Let's say we start with 20 liters of methane. Okay, so that'd be 10 2 liter bottles filled with methane gas. How many liters of water could we get from that at STP? Now what does STP stand for? It's just standard temperature and pressure. So we're moving into the gas laws here. And so you might think, here we go, grams to moles, moles to grams. But what's our problem? We don't have grams at this point. They're giving us liters to start with. And so you might think I'm stuck, but it's really easy to go from liters to moles, especially at STP. And so how do we do that? We start with 20 liters of methane in this case. We're now going to convert that to moles. And so again, using the gas law, we know that one mole of any gas is going to be 22.4 liters of that gas. It doesn't matter what the gas is. And so now we can convert uh, immediately to moles. Once we go to moles of methane, we could go convert that to moles of water. Again, we have one on this side and two on the side of the water because the coefficient is two. So now we've converted it to moles of water, and now we could go back to liters again. Now we're going to use that same moles to liter conversion, and that's going to give us 40 liters of water that we could get out of that reaction. And so again, we're using the same thing. We're going to moles, and once we get moles, we use our equation, and then we go to the other side. I hope that makes sense so far. And now let's go to a titration. Titration is something I remember doing in chemistry that I was totally confused with, but it's really simple. Let's say we have this reaction. We're combining sodium hydroxide with oxalic acid, and so we're doing a titration. So what you do is we're going to put the base up here. You're going to run that base through, and then we're going to note what the volume is when it actually turns, when we hit that equivalence point. And so why is that occurring? Well, basically what's happening is when we get to this equivalence point, we have run out of this oxalic acid. In other words, that's the limiting reactant at that point. And so if we just record the amount of sodium hydroxide we have to add, we could figure out kind of backwards how much of this oxalic acid we're going to have. And so how do you do that? We start with the known milliliters. We can convert that to liters. Once we have the liters, we can convert that to moles because we're looking at the, a simple one molar solution. We could then go from the moles to the moles of comparing the two together. So we've got the moles of the oxalic acid, one here, and sodium hydroxide is two. We can then go from there to grams, and then we could figure out how much oxalic acid we had to start with. So once we get to the moles, we can use these coefficients, and then we can compare anything in that equation together. And so did you learn to use stoichiometry calculations to predict results of a reaction? Remember, that was that simple expected yield that we got. And then did you use it to relate stoichiometry relationships, including limiting reactants? Remember, that's if we don't have enough of it. And then going to completion. Are we going all the way to the end of that reaction? And I hope that was helpful.